why do we ask you to write goals? We have noted that Christians always expect God to do what they have not defined. Uh oh, Pastor, what did you just say? Yes, ma'am. What we have realized is that Christians always expect God to do what they have not personally defined. Somebody came to Jesus and was screaming, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. That was fantastic. And Jesus said, calm down, my friend. What exactly do you want me to do? And he said that I may gain my sight. He became very specific. And at the moment when it was clear what he wanted the Lord to do, speed came. Sometimes what we call delay is lack of clarity. When you're not clear about what you exactly want God to do for you or to, if what you are asking God to do for you is contradictory to the will of God for your life, God can't give you what is against his will. But once your request lines up with the will of God for your life, he wants you to prosper, so there's nothing wrong for you to ask to prosper. He wants you to be above only and not beneath, so asking for God to promote you is in accordance with his will. He wants you to live in good health, so asking for healing is in accordance with his will. So it's important to know what the will of God is, which is found in the word of God, and allow your request to line up with the will of God, and then prayers become very effective. So you need to know exactly and clearly spell out what you want God to do for you. I mean, we have so many goals here from across the nations of the earth. People have sent us goals, uh, you know, from Nigeria. I, I want to be healed. People have sent us requests from Zambia. Benedict have sent a request from Zambia for career breakthrough this year. Uh, some other persons have sent us from the UAE, United Arab Emirates, trusting God for job in the United Arab Emirates. People have sent us requests uh, from the United Kingdom kingdom trusting god for open doors people have sent us requests from the united states venezuela and all kinds of places god is indeed in the business of answering prayer so today i'm going to be praying over your goals and the first thing i want to say is that first it is important to know that god is not intimidated by your request God is not intimidated by your request. The size of your request is only small or big relative to you. Meaning, it is small or big relative to who you are or what you have. But in the sight of God, all requests are just the same. same. So there is no such thing as a big request before you, before God. There is no such thing as small requests before God. Your greatest request is just a request. This teaches you not to learn to shrink your request as if you're sending it to an earthly father. When you want to send a request to your father, you send requests relative to your father's ability and willingness to provide. Take note of the things that I said. Every time we want to send our requests to our fathers, like when my father was on earth, there were things I couldn't tell my father I wanted him to do for me. No matter how much I have a desire for it, I couldn't ask my father for it. Why? Because of my father's limited income. So the knowledge of my father's income, the knowledge of my father's limited capacity influences the kind of request that I made to my father. So I couldn't have asked for my father, from my father for a car. I couldn't have asked for that. Because my father wasn't even using one. As at the time when I had finished my secondary education. So I couldn't have asked my father for a car. When I was in the university, I couldn't have asked my mother for 10,000 naira. I couldn't have asked for that because in the first place she didn't have it. So the knowledge of my mother's income, my father's income ability puts a limit on the kind of request I can make. In essence, my knowledge of them regulated my request from them. Let's come down to the almighty God. We need to also have a balanced knowledge of who our father God is so that when you're making a request, you will either have to tone it down or you will just simply make it without looking back. 
So question, how big is your God? <laughs> how big is your God? Because when you want to send a request, you consider to be big relative to who? So if you want to ask for, let's say, a billion dollars, question I want to ask you, it's not, is it about God not being able to provide or can you manage it? Let's look at who our God is, how big our God is. The Bible says he stretched the heavens like a curtain. The heavens are his throne. The earth is his footstool. The entire planet called earth is just a footstool of the almighty God. He is the one that commands and it is so. He decrees and it is established. Our God is the one we call the inerrant one. You cannot trace a single error to our God. If any error can be traceable to God, the perfection of God has been compromised. In essence, a little dent of error on our God has disqualified him from being called the perfect God. But we have searched over and over again. Theologians have searched, researchers have searched, and no man can find a trace of error to the God that we call the inerrant one. He is also infallible. The God that we serve is the one that the Bible calls faithful. Men have related and trafficked with him over the years and have found him to be eternally dependable. This is the God that we serve. He is mightier than the mightiest, mightier, stronger, stronger than the strongest. This God is the one whose power is is unquestionable his ability is beyond human comprehension that is how big your god is he made the thousand cattle upon the hills he is the god who made the sand upon the seashore the god who numbers every strand of hair including the one that falls from your head he takes notice of them this god is the one before whom mountains skip like rams and hills like little i mean uh, hills they skip like little lambs this is the god before whose presence the red sea parted way and jordan gave way that is how powerful our god is the god who does not use need to use any bomb or nuclear weapon to see the walls of jericho come down mighty god that he is he has brought down the mightiest of kings he has ruined the strongest of nations who turned against him. This God is beyond description. Mighty God that he is. He made everything. Earth, universe, stars, the planets, Pluto, Uranus, Saturn. He made Mars. He made all of them. The universe, the metaverse, the omniverse, all of it made by our God. When you are approaching a God like that, the God who is incomprehensible, the God who made the waters in the oceans, that God so big that he made it all. When you are approaching that God, nothing is too big. Nothing is too big before our God. You are free to ask him anything you want. He has done it for those who have gone by. He can do it again for you. He is doing it for so many today. Those who are daring enough to ask, he's willing to give. Look at what he said in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. You need to see that yourself. Ephesians chapter 3, in verse 20. I want us to look at what the word of the Lord says. Oh, hallelujah. My God is eternally dependable. My God is eternally dependable. Look at what his word says to us in the book of Ephesians chapter 3 in verse 20, the Passion's translation. Never doubt God's mighty power to walk in you and accomplish all the things that you are talking about, that you are in need of. Never doubt the power of God to accomplish them. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request. What is that request that you think is so great? Listen to what God says he will do. He says, I will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request. What that means is that your greatest 
is his minimum. Your greatest is a small thing in the sight of God. So why don't you ask? If he's able to do beyond your greatest, why do you make requests of the smallest? Number two, he is able to help you to achieve and is able to achieve through you infinitely more than your greatest request. Number two, your most unbelievable dreams. So if you have dreams that looks unbelievable, I don't even know how to ask this. This, this is just unbelievable what I'm about to ask for. Hey, go ahead and ask it. It's unbelievable with men, but not with your father. All right? Number three. So your unbelievable dreams, God is able to achieve it. Number three. God is able to exceed your wildest imaginations. So whether you're talking about dreams, imaginations, and requests, whatever these may be, God is able to exceed them and is able to outdo all of them. Hey, you've been given a blank check to make your request. You've been given a blank check to make a request. If I were you right now, please, would you kindly begin to share and invite your friends? Would you just share it on your Facebook page? Reshare it on your page. Reshare it on YouTube. Better possible share. Get somebody on board right now who is in a valley of depression. Someone who is already feeling down and out. The year has just begun and some people are already feeling down and out, feeling defeated already. Hey, get somebody on board because God is about to share with you seven major things you can do. To turn your dreams into reality in 2023. Practical day-to-day -day things you can do. That will enable you move towards the fulfillment and the actualization of your dreams. So you want your sister to learn what you're about to learn. And I'm going to be praying also for you as the Spirit of God leads me. Number two, you want your husband, your sister, your wife. You want your colleague in the office to also learn. So why don't you reach out to them now? And share this moment with them. Glory be to God Almighty. If you missed out on yesterday's broadcast, I thought you would do yourself some great good to make sure you get to watch Moment of Refreshing yesterday's edition. How to go through the storm and get to your shore. How to overcome the obstacles that are unexpected, unanticipated, unplanned, unscheduled, Attacks that may come. How do you get over the attacks? How do you get over unscheduled and unexpected disruptions in the path of your progression? How do you deal with them? I shared all of that yesterday because many get stuck when they meet with storms. Many get stuck when they meet with storms. But I shared yesterday how you can go beyond the storm instead of getting stuck. So that you don't have a situation where by midway into this year, you've lost your steam. You need to sustain your grit. G-R-I-T. Sustain your grit. Your passion to the end. Your zeal to the end. Your drive to the end. And there is a dimension of grace and wisdom that makes that a possibility. I want to share some of them with you today. By the grace of the almighty God. So would you go ahead. So God is able... To bring to pass your greatest request, your wildest imaginations and dreams. God is able to bring them to pass. The first thing you want to do is to write them down. And then present them before the Lord like many have done. And we will continue to pray and grace will back you up. So that you are able to accomplish your dreams and your goals early this year. That's why you pray. Because prayer cuts the time short. It makes you to accomplish things that naturally should take a long time. Prayer brings grace that makes you accomplish it in a short time. For he will do a work and he will cut it short in righteousness. There is a God who gives speed. And that God is able to give you speed in this season. In Jesus mighty name. There are seven things you need to do daily in order to turn your dreams, your goals into reality. Can we get to it right now? Number one, please don't fail to note this. Analyze your current realities. Analyze your current realities. Every man that accomplishes anything great in life is well acquainted before the journey begins. Is well acquainted with his current realities. 
Make sure you analyze your current realities. Where am I? What do I have? You start right there. Your present condition. Your present location. Your present income level. Where am I right now? It's important to know where am I. Analyze your current situation. Your current uh, location. Your current reality. Analyze it. It is critical that you do that. Now when we talk about your current realities, we're talking about your actualities. This is not a time to try to be vague or super spiritual. Currently, my current reality is that I'm living with a friend. Current realities, my current income is a thousand dollars per month. My current reality is that I'm jobless. My current reality is that I'm single. My current reality is that I'm married, but trust is trusting God for a child. My current reality is that I'm trusting God for a child, but the doctor says my fallopian tubes are blocked. Never begin a journey ignoring your current reality. Jesus was going to feed 5,000, but he began with current realities. How much do we say we have? The guy said we have nothing. Later they said we saw something. We find five loaves of bread. Jesus said let's have what your current realities are. We can only multiply upon our current realities. We can only move away from our current realities. Examine yourselves daily, every day. The Bible says examine yourselves daily. Understand your current realities. How much is my monthly income? How much is my monthly income? I have four children I have this X amount of income and I want my children to go to this kind of a school. Looking at my current realities, is that a wise choice to make? Okay, my friends are buying this. My friends are buying this car. My friends are traveling. My friends are relocating. My friends are investing. My friends are doing X, Y, and Z. Question. Are we on the same level? Do we have the same pedigree? Do we have the same family background? Yes, we are friends. We may even be working in the same organization. We may even be on the same income level. But do we have similar backgrounds? Do we have similar support systems? So we cannot aspire for the same thing when we do not have the same support system, background, or pedigree. I cannot start foolishly without actual, actual uh, understanding my actualities. So analyze first, where am I? What do I have? What is my current ranking? Understand your actualities. Recognize your current reality. So the first thing to do in order to succeed in life is to make sure you analyze your current realities number two thank you lord jesus number two is to visualize your future possibilities visualize your future possibilities yes this is where i am but lord can i see where you're taking me to and in the midst of my current realities i begin to develop a picture of my future possibilities this is what the vision process is all about. That I'm in my current realities. Yes, I'm living in an apartment in a bad location. But I see myself in a better house. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There's somebody watching me. This is exactly where you are right now. You are in a state of visualizing future possibilities. And you are beginning to capture in your mind the, the pictures of a better future. And the Spirit of the Lord will want me to tell you that what has entered your mind will be powered by my grace. The Lord is saying I should announce to you in this season that there is a dimension of grace coming upon you in this season that will cause the visions you have to become a reality in this season, say the Spirit of a living God. Glory be to God Almighty. Visualize your future possibilities. 
Never allow your current realities overshadow your future possibilities. Knowing where you are is to let you know where you're starting from. Knowing where you are is not to make you think this is where you end. So where you are is a starting point. Where you are is not your end. It's critical that you know where you're starting from. Every athletic race always have a starting block. You're going 1,800 kilometers or 800 meters, there is a starting block. 100 meters dash, there is a starting block. Whilst you keep your eyes on the goal, if you mess up at the starting block, you can be disqualified in the race. Analyze your current realities. Visualize your future possibilities. Jesus Christ was just beginning his ministries and his ministry, he would say to his disciples, destroy this temple and I will build it up in three days. He was just starting his ministry, but he was already seeing the future. You will see the son of man ascending and descending. I'm talking about being able to visualize where you're going to. Never let your current reality overshadow your future possibilities. Write that down. Ne I'm waiting for the fastest person to type that right now. Never let your current reality overshadow your future possibilities. The understanding of your current reality is supposed to power a desire in you for greater than this. So analyzing your current reality is to ensure, enable you to be able to become inspired by where you are and say, this is too small for me. I'm going beyond this. It's important to analyze current reality and visualize future possibility. Hallelujah. So number one, in anything you want to do in life, whatever you want to accomplish in life, always begin with your current realities. What are the current realities? Be not deceived. Start by understanding your current realities. You want to get married? You're planning your wedding current realities. You don't begin by saying, I want to invite 12,000 people. No. Current realities, how much do we all have? And are we going to be so stupid and foolish that we carry our savings to fund a wedding? Is there any return on investment for putting up such a show? Does it make a lot of sense that we waste money just to entertain people in the name of trying to wed? Who is asking us to do that? So first thing you want to do, understand your current realities. Number two, visualize your future possibilities. I, I want to say this, you are bigger than where you are. You are greater than what you have. You are smarter than what has happened to you. You failed, you're not a failure. You made a mistake, you're not a mistake. The reality of the matter is that your current reality does not define what your true future possibility will look like. Always remember, your, your latter days will be greater than your former days. Your present may be small, but your latter days are greatly increased. What that simply tells you is never allow current realities to overwhelm you. Over concentration on current realities is the reason for many depressions and frustrations. When you see your current reality as your end, instead of another starting point into a better future, you become depressed, you become frustrated. When what is happening in your life now begins to make you think this is the way my life will end. The sad reality with that is that it overwhelms you. Visualize your future possibilities. Write them down. Habakkuk chapter 2. It said write the vision. Write the vision. Visualize and write. Visualize and write. Actual reality, this is where you are living. Future possibilities, where would you want to live? Go online, try to find pictures that looks like what you want to have. 
current reality, you are working on food. Future possibility, you want to have a car. Go and find the version of car you want. Well, maybe I should tell you, I have something in mind uh, that I just, I, I'm trusting God. I'm putting my faith in God for something right now. There's, there's a car I, I have. In my, I've already taken the picture. I've made research on it. I've done reviews on the car. My God, I am just, I just can't wait for Jesus to take ownership of it. I just can't wait for that. For that to become my reality. I can't wait for that. So, what is your future possibilities? Write them down. Why? Write the vision that he may run that reads. God will bring someone into your life who has the potential to run with the vision you wrote. But what if the person that is willing to run comes but you don't have a written vision? Write the vision. Not only to inspire somebody else but to inspire you. Draw the picture. Take a snapshot of what looks like it. Keep it around you. Look at it all the time. Glory be to God Almighty. It's coming to pass. To pass. Angela, I hear the Lord saying to me, it's coming to pass. That's all I heard. Angela, the Lord said I should tell you, it's coming to pass. It looks so big right now because of your current realities. But within the next few weeks and months, you will see God change everything. And that which looks so big right now will become your current reality. So number one, make sure you analyze your current realities. Two, visualize your future possibilities. Number three, scrutinize or examine your immediate options. Scrutinize, study, examine your immediate options. You already have analyzed your current reality. You've seen your future possibilities. Question, what are the immediate options that I have that can get me started in the pursuit of my ultimate vision? What are the options available to me? List out the options. Identify the best of the options. What are the best options available to me right now? Scrutinize your options. Which one will I utilize that will accelerate me better than the others? Which one of these options costs less but gives more results? It's time to scrutinize your options. God always lets you have something you can start with. God will never leave you at any point in time in your life without what it takes to start the journey towards your future destination. You've got what it takes to begin the journey towards your future possibility. You've got it. It may be the ability to write and apply. It may be the ability to make a phone call and mention the need to somebody. It may be the ability to write an email and send an application somewhere. You've got what it takes to begin the first step towards your future destination. Father, I thank you. I see somebody who is having some proposals on your table and you're about to send them out and you're like, oh my God, Reverend Sam, how comes it's like you're talking about me? I see that there's proposal on your table and you have a big dream and that's why you're putting this proposal together and you want to send this proposal out because you're trusting God for certain jobs, certain businesses, certain opportunities because once these opportunities come, you'll be able to accomplish the dreams and the visions that God has given to you. In this moment, see at the Spirit of living God I have already put my grace upon that which you are doing and the Lord said it shall be favorably it shall be favorably responded to and the Lord said that which you are looking for shall be given to you in the name of Jesus Christ go for it is what I heard go for it finish that proposal quickly and send it out finish that proposal quickly and send it out in the name of Jesus Christ. Send that application out. Send that request out. For in this season, the heavens are working in your favor. The celestial and terrestrial forces are working in harmony to bring to pass the counsel of God for your life. In this season, see at the spirit of a living God. I see a moment of alignment between the heavens and the earth for the performance of the counsel of God concerning your life. Yea, you have come into that moment, say at the spirit of a living God. 
God. When the things you used to see from afar and you think, when will I ever step into the reality of these things? The Lord is saying at this moment, I am breaking down the, the, the gulf between you and such a dream. For in this moment, see at the spirit of a living God, I will collapse the distance between you and that which you see from afar. In this moment, that and this shall become one. That and this shall become one. You will wake up and say, how did it come to pass that so soon the things that I thought was going to take me a long time have suddenly become my reality? For in this moment, I am breaking down the chasm. I'm breaking down the gulf. I'm, I'm shutting down the gap in between you. I'm the God who lifts the valley and shut down the mountains. I'm the almighty God who makes the crooked path straight. Crooked paths make the journey long. Once you elongate it, it makes it shorter. In this season, say the Lord, I do a quick walk and I cut it short in righteousness, say the spirit of a living God. If you receive that, just type and decree, I receive it. Just type and decree and receive it. Ah, glory be to God Almighty. So scrutinize, scrutinize your options. I, I'm going to point B. What are the options I have? Do I have a car? Uh, do, I, do I have to use a bike? Do I have to use, do I have to trek? And if I have to trek, what paths do I follow that will lead me there within a short time? What are my options? Identify the best options that will enable you to reach your ultimate destination this year. Number four, capitalize on the windows of opportunities that God will be bringing your way this year. Capitalize, I'm about to pray for you now capitalize on the windows of opportunity that God will be bringing your way this year. My God, you have analyzed your current realities. You have been able to go beyond analyzing your current realities. You've been able to visualize your future possibilities. You have scrutinized your options. And now you are in a moment where God is going to start opening up for you windows of opportunities. God is also going to be opening up for you what we call doors of opportunities. So sometimes there will be windows of opportunities and at other times there will be doors of opportunities. The bottom line is that God is about to bring to you what you could not have been able to create by yourself. Paul the apostle said, when I arrived in Troas, it said, I found that a door of opportunity has been opened. I want to announce to someone watching me right now. I, I hear the name Iko Abasi. Iko Abasi. The Lord said, you've entered into the season and into the year where I will begin to line up, say the spirit of a living God. I will be lining up before you, Iko Abasi. I'll be lining up before you, series of doors interconnected. One door will lead to another door. Say at the spirit of a living God, you've entered into that season. Everybody watching me right now. You've entered into the season when God will be opening up for you doors of opportunities. Life-changing opportunities. Amazing doors. Doors of connection. Doors of favor. God is going to be opening these doors of opportunities. Doors that will bring you to your destination to your future possibilities doors that will lead you there within a short time for esther it was an opportunity a door god opened that has to do with page entry page entry however you want to call it esther was in the land of persia current iran and then a window of opportunity opened up the wife of the king had misbehaved and by the decree of the elders, plus the approval of the king, the king's wife was banished from the palace, creating a vacuum in the palace. That vacuum necessitated a pageantry where the women would come and display their beauty before the king. And Esther heard about it. And Esther did not disqualify herself by saying, you know, I am not an Iranian girl. I'm not a Persian girl. And also, my parents are dead. I'm an orphan. I don't think I qualify. Mordecai inspired her and she joined in that pageantry. It was an open door. 
Mordecai and Esther always desired that the Jews in the land will be free. But they do not have a foothold in the kingdom. They do not belong to the government. So when will that dream ever come to pass? It was a desire, a vision that someday the Jews will be free. Here was an opportunity for somebody to come into the king's palace as a wife. They capitalized on that. They couldn't have created that opportunity. Esther couldn't have gotten to get rid of the wife of the king. But the wife of the king by divine orchestration made an error that made her to be taken out of the palace. All the women from Persia who came to contest were set aside and Esther was the chosen. She will not have been chosen if she had not seized the moment. Somebody type and declare, I will see and seize the moment. Lives are made in moments. Destinies are made in moments. Don't miss your moment this year. You will not miss your moment. Moments come shrouded up in opportunities. Moments come as opportunities in disguise. Opportunities also come as responsibilities. If you look at the responsibility and you shrink away, you're losing an opportunity and you're losing your moment. You will see and seize moments this year. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you, Joe, and I see you writing that I will see and seize moments. Glory be Shona, Prosperous, Shona, Prosperous. You will see and seize moment. Capitalize on it. Once you see the opportunity, a God-inspired, God-created, God-orchestrated opportunity, make sure once you sense it and you see it and you have an approval in your spirit to pursue it, don't waste the moment. Imagine if Esther had had to take uh, going to compete as the wife of the king. Imagine if she had taken it to religious people. They would have talked her out of it. Sometimes the reason you miss moments is those you talk to about it. My God, did you hear what I just said right now? The reason you miss your moment is because of those you talk to about it. And don't forget your opportunity is not our opportunity. And how your opportunity appears may not be what I like. You must be sensitive enough to see and seize your moment. Thank you, Father. Somebody's looking at me right now. Say, Pastor Sam, would you pray for me? Opportunities like that have come in my life. And later, looking back now, I regret missing those opportunities. I don't know who you are. But I see somebody saying, Pastor, I'm the one. Opportunities have come like that. Yes, you've seen. In fact, looking back now, you can tell one, two, three, four, five were opportunities that I should have seized in my life, but I missed them. And now I see people who seize them. I can see what God is doing in their lives. And I say to myself, that should have been me. That could have been me. If only I had been sensitive. In fact, you were the first to see it. You were the first to be aware of it, but you were the one that talked yourself out of it. Well, the Lord is saying, I should tell you, in this moment, I am showing you mercy. And I'm bringing you another opportunity again. You have to be in touch with my spirit, say the spirit of a living God, so you can see it and you'll be swift to seize it. Glory be to God. I see Barbara saying, Pastor Sam, I'm the one. Jane said, I'm the one you're talking to. Sharon said, I'm the one you're talking to. Shallow said, I'm the one. Micah, you don't have to cry. The Lord said, I should tell you, I'm giving you another opportunity. I'm, I'm bringing another one your way. That's why you attend meetings like this. This is why your brother should be here now. Your family is weeping because your brother missed an opportunity. I'm talking to somebody. Your family is in a crisis now because your father missed an opportunity. A family is in a mess now because a husband missed an opportunity. Jesus came to the Jews and Jesus wept. He said because they know not the time of their visitation. They missed it. They were looking at him as a carpenter's son. But that was the Messiah they've been praying for. They missed it. An entire nation missed it. Families can miss it. Churches can miss it. Nations can miss it. I am somebody, somebody needs to hear this right now. I pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will not miss your moments this year. The only thing that is left after people miss moments, regrets. The only thing left after missing moments, regrets, pains. 
setback, shame, reproach, lack, begging. That's what happened when people miss moments. This year, you want to walk with the Holy Spirit so much so that whenever there are moments created by God in form of opportunities that come as responsibilities, you don't let the responsibility of taking Goliath off. When David saw Goliath, there was a prophecy on David's head that he was going to be the king. Oil had been poured on him like oil had been poured on you. Prophecy had been released on him. But for him to become the king, opportunities have to line up for him to become the king. How do I know that? He took Goliath, brought him down. When the time came for David to become the king of Israel, listen to what the people said. They said, David, who is it that has gone out with us and has fought our battles and has gotten us a victory? And that was the basis upon which David became what he was prophesied to be. If David had shied away from battles because there were serious responsibilities, David would have missed opportunities and David will have missed his moments. And David will have missed the throne. I don't know who I'm talking to. God is about to bring some things. They will come like work. They will come like problems. And God wants you to step up. Everybody will be backing up from it. Everybody saw Goliath and left the shore. Left the land. But David said nobody wants to take up this responsibility. He took it up. That became the gateway to his popularity in the country. See it and seize it. Good God Almighty. Woo! Sharapiko celebrandos here. Gati di call. I speak healing to your body. In the name of Jesus, the Lord touch you right now. Capitalize on every window of opportunity. Number five, harmonize your faith with actions. Harmonize your faith with actions. Make sure there is corresponding action. I believe God is taking me to this place. I believe God is making me to become X, Y, and Z. I will capitalize on opportunities with corresponding actions. I believe God is going to make me to be this. Where is your action? What do you do daily to show that you believe in what God has revealed? What are you doing daily? That is where the victory lies. Your future is dependent on your daily actions. Your future is dependent on your daily actions. Corresponding actions. Corresponding decisions. That you take steps every day. Leading you into that prophetic future that God has given to you. Wake up to pray. Wake up to study. Go for mentorship. Subscribe to someone whose wisdom you covet. Don't just go to church. Ask God to give you a pastor. Ask God to give you a mentor. He said, I will give you pastors, not I will give you church. Find someone whose voice will shape your future. Serve under someone whose voice will prepare you for that which has been prepared for you. Glory be to God Almighty. Harmonize your faith. With action. Don't just say I believe I'm going to have a great future. Wake up every day. And take steps. Make decisions. Make choices. That lead you in that direction. Number, number six. Neutralize your doubts and your fears. Neutralize. I'm going to see the first person to write that down. Neutralize your doubts and your fears. Everyone who has accomplished anything great on earth will tell you they had to overcome fear. They had to overcome doubt. Self-doubt. People's doubt. People look at you and say, we don't think someone like you can do it. Experts look at you and say, we doubt the potential of this business. Oh, and fear. Internally generated fear. Externally imposed fears. If you are going to get to where God is taking you to. If these goals have to be accomplished this year. You have to neutralize your fears. Neutralize your doubts. Shut down the voice telling you you are incapable. Shut down the voice telling you you don't have what it takes. You are good enough to become what God showed you. You are good enough to have what God promised you. 
you are good enough to become what God has revealed to you. Shut down, neutralize your doubts and your fears. You are more than this. Greater than this. You are deserving of it. You belong to your father. Blessing you with a million is not a thing of concern to God. It is what the father loves to give to his children. He wants to lavish his goodness on you. Neutralize your fears and your doubt. Get rid of fear this year. It's time to move to your higher orbits. The Lord just said to me, For last Shade, the Lord said, Take those steps. For last Shade, take those steps. Shut down the fear. And for last Shade, I'm not talking about taking easy steps. I'm talking about taking some of the greatest steps you've always been afraid of taking, but you need to take. I told some of you yesterday. I said to you, what was difficult for you to do when it was easy? You will do it with ease now that it is difficult. My God. What was difficult for you to do before when it was easy? You will do it now with ease, even though it has become difficult. Because God is putting upon you such level of grace and resource such that what was very difficult to do before will be so easy to do even though it has become several times complex glory be to god almighty thank you father i hear that happening right now neutralize your doubt neutralize your fears take the bold step take the first step take the first step remember what i taught you yesterday go and listen to it again stop looking at your jordan put your feet in it Oh, Pastor Sam, they've sent me bill of quantity. And the bill of quantity says that I will need about 2 billion, 2 million, to this, 300 million, 400 million to do it, to achieve it. Pastor Sam, I don't have that kind of money right now. Hey, who says you need to have all of it? Start right where you are. Neutralize your doubt. Neutralize your fear. I'm about to pray for people with projects. Everyone with a project right now, I want to pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. But before I, before I pray for your projects, hear you the word of the Lord. The last thing you must do this year in order to accomplish your greatest goals. Don't only neutralize your fears and your doubt. Make sure that you prioritize, prioritize your relationship with people and with God. Prioritize your relationship with people and with God. You can't do anything without God. And God can't do so much in your life without men. You need to develop the capacity to relate with different editions of human beings. Increase your social intelligence. Increase your emotional intelligence. Increase your positive intelligence. Increase your capacity to relate to people from different tribes, different tongues, different race different colors different ethnicity because for your destiny to become a reality there will be the interplay of different people the chinese will manufacture it for you the americans will sell it to you the uk may have to nurture the administrative skills in you you must develop the competence to relate with different editions of people Stop bringing into your cycle only people that look like you, talk like you, think like you. What you are doing is you are cloning your network. The pain of such relationships is that your cycle and your achievement will be very small. You need people with temperaments you don't like. You need people whose worldview is different from yours. Pursue the same goal and let them have their different worldviews. Their difference is for your success. Similarity is for comfort. The differences that people bring on board actually inspire success in your life. Open up, increase the latitude of accommodation. Increase your latitude for people. Jesus Christ, the son of a living God, when he came, he did not rely on people from his family alone. From every tribe in Israel, he found them. And beyond Israel, he found us. And today, we are doing much more for the cause of Jesus than even those who are from the Jewish community.
we, the Gentiles, are doing more for Jesus than those who are of his own origin. The point I'm making is those who may take your vision to the next level, those who may accelerate you into your prophetic destiny this year will be people whose tribe you don't understand, whose language you don't speak, whose color you may not have. There are people with different backgrounds from different race, different tongues, and God will be bringing them from the east. They may not share the same religion with you. And yet God will use them like Cyrus's and Darius's, like Nebuchadnezzar. God will use them to actualize his plans and purpose for your life. Can I pray for you now? Oh. Father, I thank you. Now say the spirit of a living God, I am opening up the gates and the doors and I'm bringing into your life a company of men and women. They will begin to arrive as individuals. They will begin to arrive in trickles and over time they will begin to increase in number. Even as I began to bring men unto David, men of diverse kinds, even as I brought men to David first, they were the weak ones first, they were the ones who were maimed, but later I began to bring to David captains of industries. Even so say the spirit of a living God, in this season I'm beginning to bring into your life the kind of people that are needed to fast track your destiny even as I send you into the life of others to fast track their destinies in this season say the Lord I am bringing the people that will move you into your prophetic fulfillment even as I have revealed unto you say the spirit of a living God I pray for everyone doing a project whatever the project is there are things you have desired to do accomplish there are goals before you building a house building an office you want to travel whatever the project is put your hands on the screen i want to pray for you right now because there's there's grace there's grace there's grace i don't know why throughout this week the lord has just been releasing on me grace for building 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 i don't know what project you're about to embark on father in the name of jesus grace is released now on your children and as you begin to identify the best option to take right now and the next step to take, I pray that grace will guide you. God will guide you. And I pray that resources will begin to meet you each step of the way. You will never lack anything good in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father God, for the woman who is crying before you right now, saying, Lord, heal my body. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke that sickness from your body. I command it to lose you and let you go. I thank you, Father, for the one saying, Pastor Sam, pray for me. I'm trusting God to be supernaturally married. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare, this is the acceptable year of the Lord. This is the acceptable year of the Lord for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody is the same, Pastor, please pray for me. I'm trusting God for open doors to the nations of the earth, for my business, for my ministry. Right now, I join faith with you. And I decree and declare that the God who is doing it in our lives, that same God will extend his mercies towards you. Great doors be open for you for your business, for your ministry, for your family, in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm hearing the word funding, funding. And the Lord is saying the funding you've been praying for, here it comes. The funding you've been praying for, here it comes. Uh, somebody's wearing braces, braces. And the Lord is saying to me, there seems to be some dislocation somewhere. And the Spirit of the Lord is saying, I'm healing you right now. And the Lord said, you will go to the doctor. And they will check it up and confirm that there is no more need for the braces. Say the spirit of a living God. Thank you, our God and Father. Somebody is saying to me, Pastor Sam, I've been under severe witchcraft attack lately. Right now, I decree and declare that the access way into your spiritual space have just been cordoned by the angelic forces of heaven. The Bible says and God drove Adam out of the garden and put cherubims around the garden that no one is able to enter anymore. From today, I garrison around your mind and your spirit space. I garrison around you angelic cherubims who will watch over you and stop the inflow of satanic powers and incursions of darkness in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody say, Pastor, pray for my brother, pray for my sister. She's under demonic manipulation from altars. Right now, I decree that the Lord will thunder on that altar and destroy the control on your sister, on your brother, on your husband, on your wife, on your son, on your daughter. Right now, such altars lack power to control your family members. In the name of Jesus Christ, whatever your goals are, I pray for favor. I pray for speed. I pray for connection. I pray for open doors. This becomes your reality. 
and I decree they will begin to happen quickly. What you think will take months, what you think will take a year, the Lord will cut it short in righteousness. It is done in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen.